Hey, what's up folks? That exercise right there is something I'm gonna call scooter, okay? Um, why do I call it scooters? Because we started right there, we fired a shot, and choo, we scooted on down there to a place where we can make another shot, okay? Um, like all of our exercises, uh, we'll show you what it is, how to set it up with a diagram, talk you through that a little bit, and then I'll run it, I'll show you how to run it. Uh, then we go deep in the weeds and all the little housing wines and the things you can use or do as you're training it, okay? Um, remembering that what I'm throwing at you, this is not a drill, this is an exercise, okay? If you attack it that way and approach it that way in your training, uh, the amount of time that you have to invest in your training can better go towards conditioning yourself to be a better shooter so that you can win, whether that be in combat or competition. Uh, all the exercises kind of apply to either arena, okay? Um, now, so the, the overview there, you can take a look at this diagram, uh, it'll be available for you later as well, uh, showing you exactly how everything's set up. Um, we got two stacks of barrels. Those barrels are five yards apart. We got two targets out there. They're 10 yards away from the last set of barrels there. So they're 15 yards from right here, okay? Uh, standing, uh, what we're gonna do, we'll start here where we can see the outside target. In this case, it's got a, what was that one? A five on it, okay? Um, we're standing where we can see that and that's the only one we can see. Uh, we do have our shooting area set up with a garden hose there where you know that's the only target we can see from this position and then we got another shooting area laid out down there on the other side of the last stack of barrels where we can see target number four okay so we're going to stand here static looking at that one make a hit on it from the holster and then scoot on down there in a position where we can engage number five okay or number four rather all right so that's uh that's what we're going to do now let's talk about the hows and whys and stuff okay so why are we looking at a 15 yard target and working it from the holster? Visual discipline, okay? Um, working some smooth, comfortable fluid mechanics from the holster, efficient mechanics, okay, and fast processing speed. The stuff that we talked about in Fonzie, which is another episode that you might wanna check out because it, you know, this builds off of that, okay? Um, so that being a little bit harder target, okay, it's 15 yards away, it's only 11 inches wide and 18 inches tall. Um, we need to make that visual connection to the gun right away. And as a theme in the exercises or in any of our shooting, um, we need to make that visual connection to the gun right out of the holster. Okay, if we do that, things start to fall into place nicely for us as we move along and we stay nice and comfortable in the mental game. Okay, so we make that hit. Now we're not going to wait for sound. Okay, or if you're shooting paper, you're not going to wait to take a look out there and see if you see a hole in the paper. Okay plug into the gun. We're going to see the gun coming. When the sights touch down, take notice of exactly how your sights look, alignment and placement. Okay. And then as soon as you see what you need to see, trigger the gun. Now, um, in the episodes we've talked about where we've talked about processing and seeing fast, I've, I've gone into the weeds on all the tools that we have to see and process information and how fast we can see it. So you won't have to wait to notice how those sights are aligned and placed on the target. Just see it, just capture it, okay? Capture it at live speed, okay? Should be something kind of like that. Here comes a gun, there's some bumpy things, there's through the sights, that's good enough, and you shoot. Just capture what that looks like as the front sight lifts. You'll know what you need to know at that point. You don't have to wait on sound, you don't have to look out there and see a bullet hole, you don't have to see a target move. You saw it in the sights, you pressed the triggers, the sights were still on the target when the front sight lifted, you're done, baby. Now it's time to go. Now, we're plugging a reload into this thing, okay? Um, we're doing a USPSA style reload. You can also do a slide lock reload. There will be no difference in the amount of time that it takes, especially if you're efficient with your mechanics, okay? Um, plugging the reload in there so that it becomes a little bit more of a compound exercise again. That's a theme we're running in all these exercises. We're trying to do as much stuff as we can in the amount of time that we have to invest in ourselves as shooters, okay? Um, so we'll plug that reload in there, get the reload done. We're going to get on down there and get into position where we can see number four and then make the hit quickly. Now, um, on the mechanics of the reload, we've, we've talked reload stuff in other episodes. I'll talk about it again here. Uh, you notice there's another barrel out there to the side. We've also talked about spatial awareness in other episodes. Okay. Now what I want you to use, you know, we're focused on, during the mechanics of the reload. Okay. We have to see the inside of the magwell. We have to see the, the tip of the first bullet going into the magwell. If we see those things, you know, the mechanics usually end up working out pretty good. They're vision driven mechanics, okay? Um, other thing, your focus is gonna be tied up in that, okay? 
awareness can see other things, okay? In awareness, we'd like to keep the world as big as it is while we're shooting guns. So as you're working, as you're working this exercise, take notice of where you're at in relationship to that barrel when you get the pistol reloaded, okay? Are you done before you get to that barrel? Are you still struggling with it after the barrel, et cetera, okay? Just a tool to evaluate yourself, a way to get you outside of yourself as a shooter, be more analytical as you're training, and keep the world as big as it is while we're shooting guns, okay? Um, initiating the reload, of course, as soon as you fired that first accurate shot and you know it because how you saw the sights, start initiating the reload, okay? Um, there are schools of thoughts, schools of thought, different schools of thought, with um, you know reloading on the move, okay? Uh, if you're looking at pure USPSA style there, uh, you'll run into places where you're in a position, you do some shooting, you got to cover some ground, you can get the gun reloaded while you're covering the ground. So you have options. You can either initiate the reload and get it mostly done as your body's just kind of leaning forward, not really necessarily a pause, but as you're going forward, or you can go full on like out of the starting blocks there and you know try to reload it as you're running couple different options explore both of them see what you think i prefer to kind of get it done as my body's starting to go into motion so maybe like a mile little pause and then accelerate and go okay um, we're making a five yard sprint okay so we're going to cover the ground as quickly as we can we're going to kind of explode and cover ground and then we have to decelerate and then stop we can't go from full speed to stopped okay so we have to accelerate and then we have to decelerate and then we have to stop okay um, body mechanic stuff there. You can see what's going on in the video some. Um, you don't really have to overthink this. If, uh, you know, if, if you have any sort of athleticism, okay, and, and you're vision driven, your vision is gonna drive your body to start doing those things, okay? Uh, on the vision driven side of the house, I would say, you know, once you get the, the reload done, now you start accelerating, what we're gonna see, okay? I need to throw that at you there. You know, we're going down there so we can see target number four. So there's no need to let your vision drift way out here in the woods or whatever, you know, have your vision burning a hole through the outside edge of this target, okay? Or, or this barrel rather, because you know what you're looking for is on the outside edge of it, okay? So if, you'll, if you're scooting down there and you're staying inside this uh, shooting area, somewhere right around here, you're gonna be able to see number four. Now that should trigger your body to start slowing down, okay? No kidding, your, your eyes will start driving this thing if you let them, okay? Um, you start slowing down, you come into a position where you can shoot. Your eyes will also, if you will let them, you know, like, and, and want to cover the ground and get the gun on the target quickly, your eyes will do that. Your eyes will teach your hands what to do, okay? Um, and that should put you in a position where you're settling in or you just settle into a good position and you're able to shoot, okay? We shouldn't have to be in that position for more than about you know half a second or so before we're able to fire a shot. Maybe we're able to fire the shot as our body's kind of settling and it hasn't completely come to rest, okay? Um, that is all gonna be vision driven, you know, and how the mechanics end up shaking out, you know? Um, you know, we're gonna do what we can, you know, your, your mind will, if you'll let it. Um, we'll do what it's got or do what it can and use all the tools it has available to give you this, okay? Uh, as you're, you're moving in there and you're decelerating, and you're slowing down, that's when we can start presenting guns to targets, okay? Um, you're starting to make that visual connection to the gun and your, your eyes are like, okay, here you go. There's the target. Here comes the gun. I need the sights on the target. And as soon as I see what I need to see, I'm gonna trigger it, right? Well, as that's going on, okay? This is a let it do kind of thing, okay? As that's going on, the supercomputer in here is like, okay, I got it. I know what you want to do, okay? You want to put the sights on that target. Let me take control of all these tools that I've got to, 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 to slow your body down and give you that, okay? That'll happen. Now, if that sounds like crazy freaky or weird to you, think about what happens when you drive a car, all right? Do you think about or do you have to consciously tell yourself how much brake pressure to apply to come to a stop 400 feet away if you're going 48 miles an hour? Probably not, you know? Do you have to think about how to come to a stop if you're going 15 miles an hour and you need to stop in 20 feet? You don't have to think about how much brake pressure to apply or how to move your foot to make all that happen. You just do it, okay? Your body knows how to do things, okay? 
let it. Okay, your mind knows how to tell your body how to do those things. Let it. Okay, don't get in its way with overthinking stuff. Okay, all right. Now, uh, if you want to overthink anything, overthink what you're seeing. Okay, what you're seeing. Okay, um, that's going to be the key to unlock your abilities to let it do. Okay, um, other things. Um, running with the hands on the gun or off of the gun. Okay. Generally, I believe if we're covering more than two steps, then we should take the support hand off the gun, the gun so we can more efficiently cover ground. We can use our arms to kind of help us run, okay? Now, when we are moving and the gun's out of our line of sight, we should still, or rather not in our eyes because we're not shooting, we should still keep the gun in a good position, okay? Kind of below the chin, not too far below the chin, kind of perpendicular to your chest and parallel the ground. You can kind of see what I'm doing there in the video. Um, you also see that once I, you know, my support hand was done reloading the gun, it was back out there in space and I was running. You may notice that my hand, when I'm running, my support hand stays open. That thumb stays at a right angle. I didn't do that on purpose. You know, doing a lot of this kind of stuff and getting a lot of these challenges, you know, the machine kind of took over and adapted the body to do some things to help it, okay? Um, you know, your brain knows, you know, my brain knows like, hey, when I get into that position, I want two hands on the gun in a good parallel grip so I can better control it. Okay? That's why that hand's staying out with the thumb at a right angle. So it can land back on the trigger guard okay, and roll forward, this, the index finger that is, excuse me, <laughs> the index finger can land on the trigger guard and roll forward into a parallel grip as I settle into position. Okay? Um, when to start moving that, that support hand back there to the gun and start establishing two-handed control on the gun, about when you start slowing down. Okay? As you start, you're, you see what you need to see, that triggers your body to start that deceleration process. That's about when we'll start getting, or start heading towards two hands back on the gun so that when we come to a pause, we're ready to shoot, okay? Um, things to look at and evaluate for yourself there. Are you overrunning the position, okay? If you're overrunning the position, you need to think about decelerating, okay? Trigger the eyes out there a little bit sooner so we can decelerate a little bit sooner, okay? Um, we're only going down there to fire a shot, but I want you to settle into the position as if you're gonna shoot about three or four targets, okay? You don't wanna shoot three or four targets falling out of position, okay? So that'll be a thing to evaluate. All right, folks, I hope that all makes sense to you. Like I said, we kinda of got deep into the weeds and all the little things that are going on here. This is not a drill, it's an exercise. If you wanna look at a time standard, um, where did my timer go? I was hitting this thing uh, between like 3.5s, you know, the 3.5 range up into the mid three sixes, okay? Uh, so like 3.65 down to like 3.53-ish, okay? Um, not the standard, I'm not saying you go out here and you set up the drill and you do that 10,000 times until you can do that. You know, um, as always, you know, the timer is just there capturing time. Don't set a par time. Uh, don't think about the time that I'm doing it in. That's just, the timer is just there to capture what's going on and give us some more reps on working as that being a start signal. So if you're a competitive shooter, the more reps you get to kind of condition yourself to the, you know, hey, that timer is no big deal, you know? Um, that, that's what the timer's there for. Uh, just give us some, com, some conditioning reps and to capture time. All right, folks, that's what I got for right now. Hope that all makes sense to you. Diagram's back up there again for you to take a look at to see how to set it up. We'll catch y'all next time on Let It Do TV. Thanks, y'all.